crappy does this place look, huh? It's disgusting. Absolutely horrific. Okay, no, it's not. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's an incredible dark, 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 dark green. And you know what? I kind of feel like I'm working myself out of a job here because I haven't put any fertilizer on this for at least six weeks, maybe seven. Last thing it got was green charge. And that was it. It's just sort of sitting and I was kind of waiting to see when it was going to start to fade out again. But the heat and the drought doesn't really seem to be doing anything. That is something else. All right, so at the beginning of this year, I had the mower set as low as it would go. And then about three or four weeks ago, I decided to raise it up to whatever number four means. It went from a, a zero to a four. So it looks to me like the grass is being cut at like an inch and a quarter. Maybe it's an inch and a half. I figured that with the winds and with the heat, I might as well raise it up a little bit. Um, not that it looks long by any means, but it's it's as long or longer than I've ever had my my own turf. And honestly, it looks pretty dang good. Now, the other day I did a video and um, you can click right up here or right up here. I think it's over here, right there. You can click over here. Uh, I was basically doing my, my sand leveling down on my green and I did some drone shots. I'm gonna show you these real quick. So if you look, uh, from the drone, you can still see there's some spots uh, that look like you can actually clearly see the seams in the grass. I wanted to talk a little bit about that because if you're walking around down here now, there's, there's no chance you're going to see anything like that. But from up above, there's enough of uh, a line that you can see. And that was from me putting down the RPR as well because that kind of dropped into the gaps of uh, the turf when I laid it. and. So that grass is longer, and that longer grass makes it look darker. So if you kind of look over um, this whole view of the lawn, there's a couple of areas where if it looks a little bit lighter, that's because that's some unevenness in the lawn itself. So right here is one of those. And from the drone, this looks a little bit lighter. Well, it's considerably thinner because even the robo mower as it comes through, uh, mowing McMo face over there, as it comes through, it's still catching these little spots. Now. I'm still considering doing some sort of leveled out thing up here. Um, probably not with sand, or if I use sand, it's going to be very, uh, just a part of a mix. Um, but I definitely want to do something here, back here on this section, because this, this is an area that's, uh, again, it's the gaming area, and this is going to become more of a pitch. So I want to be able to bring the Hudson up here and kind of smooth this out, not smooth it out, but mow it, real mow it lower. Than the way it's getting now and give it just sort of a uh its own look right there now it's smooth enough right now to run the real mower through it but i think it's, hard, it's probably hard to tell on camera but there's a little dip and then another little dip and it kind of just kind of has a couple little undulations back there which i think i could probably fix and patch uh before things get away from me this summer so that's going to be something coming up up here so here's the current condition of the green. It's only been a couple of days uh, since I did the fill in here and that line has shrunk considerably as the grass has started to grow up. I did get a mow on it and cut it back down um, so you can kind of see in here where there's like fresh mow lines that come across and the other little spots where I was just trying to touch up and fill they were just a little low from patching earlier in the season so you can see the extra sand just kind of up here and around that little slope all the grass is starting to grow up through there and then you can see all the grass coming in right through there as it's starting to to kind of reset itself across that trough that's going to be huge that break and the and how that was catching the um the mower was really just sort of a pain in the butt but if you'll notice the uh, water just turned off and that's because of this area right in yon. now it has been trodden on a little bit and it probably shouldn't have been 
but this is sort of a summertime seeding test plot patch. Um, I put seed in this five days ago. I have given it no fertilizer. I've given it nothing but water and I'm just keeping it um, just damp, basically. So it is in the heat quite a bit and it is up and moving and this is day five. Now, this is some old RPR seed that I had. So what I'm basically having here in this lawn space is a little chipping section um, right here. And this is small, this is maybe 100, and maybe 150 square feet is what this little section is. 150 square feet of RPR. It's right on the edge of the bent grass. And this is what bent grass looks like when it gets a little longer along the fringe. It's actually really super beautiful. Um, to have right here, and then there's a mix right up there. So we've got so essentially three different turf types. That's still predominantly bluegrass up there, even though there is a little bit of rye in it, as it's predominantly bluegrass. 100% rye here. 100% bent grass right here. And I have been sorely tempted to replace my whole upper lawn with this grass, because it is freaking amazing. I mean, it's it's beautiful. It just spreads in so thick and, and you're not really limited to any particular height. Once it gets to about like an inch, inch and a half, it starts to sort of lay over on itself, but that doesn't really bother me at all. Um, it's it's incredible turf. So that may be something to consider in the future. But for right now, this has been sort of an interesting, um, I guess if you want to call it grow in here to see the seed come through with very little site prep. I mean, just kind of rake down the topsoil, spread the seed, kind of scratched it in a little bit, put a tiny bit of covering over it and just letting it go, letting it rip. It's all coming in just fine. So we'll see how long this takes to fully fill in. I don't think it's gonna to be too long with how much germination has already happened. Um, but I'll keep you guys updated. So I guess here's the point of all this because I've been doing a lot of work up here. I haven't been making a whole lot of videos and there's a very good reason why I've had so many projects to do around the home because in not too much time, there's going to be a wedding taking place right here on this lawn right out in this beautiful space, maybe standing somewhere right up there. And for the next while, what you're gonna see happening around here is me doing a bunch of projects to get this place ready for a total change in my domestic life. So, last year, and again, a link right up here, I did a lot of work re renovating a person's lawn to get ready for a wedding, and now, I get to do it for my own. However, my lawn's in kick-ass shape, so I just need to keep it there. Um, which means I don't get to really mess around, I don't get to screw with things, I don't get to do any other fun stuff that I like to do. This is just going to keep chugging along on my program, gets its bio stems. It's only probably gonna be fed once in the next little bit and then one time before that happens, but I gotta keep it thick and weed free and so far it seems to be doing that just fine and that's one thing that I wanted to point out because now we're into the end of July and this has been mowed or been getting mowed every single day by the robo mower and again no pre-emergence still still not doing that um, I have done one application of Trimec of 24D early in the season, and I have not done any since. I'm just letting the mower do everything, and it seems to be keeping everything very clean and very nice. Now, for those of you that love stripes, there are some updates coming to some of these robo mowers that will be direct lines that may be able to do something like that for you, but I doubt it. They will at least mow in straight lines. When the grass is a little longer, like it is right now, um, it definitely has a little bit more of a layover pattern because of that thing. It doesn't, it, when I had it shorter at like sub one inch, it just was a clean slate out here. It just, it looked like the top of a pool table. So I do want to just give a shout out to the robo mower because it's, it's killing it. I mean, it is absolutely doing such a dynamic job here. I, I don't really know what to say. Now, 
I also want to talk a little bit about my watering and what's happening up here. I did not program my sprinklers. Um, there was a feature on the Beehive, uh, my uh, sprinkler timer, that was uh, smart watering. And, you know, it's pulling data from somewhere. It's not always correct, but it seems to be watering anywhere between two and three days a week. And it's watering roughly 15 minutes a station. I've only seen it go more than that one time, and that was in a pretty big dry stretch. So it's mowing, or I'm sorry, it's not mowing, it's watering about every other day and not for a significant amount of time, but it's more than enough. Just walking around up here, there's the moisture in the ground is plentiful and I didn't do anything. So earlier in the year, I, I put a video out talking about fully automated lawn care. The only thing that I'm missing up here is I don't have a fertigation tank in place, but other than that, I have not had to do a whole lot. I have fed it twice, two times this year, that's it. And uh, so right now I'm running, I guess I put down about 0.6 pounds of in total for the season. And that's it. That's all that's happened up here. So it's flourishing. And if I was going to say one, I did one other sort of science experiment. And I, I apologize if this is sort of long winded. There's a lot to talk about here for those of you who have been following along for a long time. This is probably all fun stuff for you. Um, Earlier in the year, I put sulfur down on my golf green because the pH was so high of that wash sand and that material. So I put some sulfur down there and lowered the pH and it's been just sort of trending lower over time. Well, I got to thinking, you know, somebody one time a few years ago gave me a whole bunch of shit about not correcting the pH of my own soil or one of my friend's soil who had like a 7.8 pH. And I made the comment that if the turf isn't suffering, and the program is working the way it is, there's really no reason I don't see an added benefit to changing the pH in that situation. So I did take one section just down here and I ran uh, seven pounds of sulfur around here. And there is no difference in the green, the thickness or the density of the turf. If you're walking around here, you can't tell one bit of difference between down there and up here and later in the season we'll check the ph and look at what actually happened and see if there was enough of a difference to make that effort worth it so that's really all i had i wanted to make sure you guys got all caught up on everything that was happening around here just want to thank you for joining being a part of this and i want you to know that twenty-five thousand subscribers is coming up and i have something very special planned for that so hope you're subscribed Talk to you guys real soon. See ya.